billahi minash shaitani rajim bismillahir rahmanir rahim my dear viewers and listeners at home i say assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh i want to welcome you to our daily hadith on king media king review today insha allah we shall be looking at the saying of the prophet that says qala rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa sallam idha mata al insan in qata anhu amaluhu illa min thalath الا من صدقه جاريها او علم ينتفع به او ولد صالح يدعو الله the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was reported to have said when the son of adam dies all his avenue of earning reward with allah are ceased they are cut off he cannot pray he cannot um, observe fasting he cannot go for hajj he cannot do sadaqa except three things he will only earn reward from three things Sadaqa to Jariya, a flooring charity, a continuous charity. This has to do with whether he has an endowment fund that he has created, whether he has a, how, a, a masjid that he has built, whether he has dug a borehole. As long as people earn benefit from this, he also earns reward with Allah. Our ilmu yuntafa ubi, all beneficial knowledge that people benefited from him. If he has Allah has gifted with a skill and he passes it on to people, as long as they earn, they make uh, hands meet and the, it's beneficial to them after him he also gets a reward and the third one is Allah to have children good children righteous children that will remember him or her in prayers as long as they do that we continue to get reward with Allah pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us long life as long as we live may we have the opportunity of earning and preserving our legacy by doing righteous deeds before we finally leave this world. Akul kawli aaz astagfirullah li wa lakum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi You know, when I appear on this show, it is definitely Muslima and modesty. So, mashallah, we are going to move on. And don't forget, this show is coming from Key Media. So, mashallah, let's quickly dwell on our previous programs. We've talked about how a Muslima should dress, dresses for different occasions color combinations i believe we are following the process so inshallah we will be talking on muslima accessories the accessory includes the bag the shoe the wrist washes the chains that you should use so don't forget i am shukra adebayo once again salam alaikum so inshallah let's move on you can't expect me to put on a pink outfit, then I will not put on, I will not be holding a lilac bag. It is not possible. The way we have colors that goes for every occasion, for every dresses, same as the way we have colors of bags that go with every dress. We have color black, white, those are the two major colors. Those two colors, they go perfectly with any color of the dress that you are putting on. Yes, when we are talking about Muslima fashion modesty, we need to show them that yes, Islam is about fashion. Islam is about modesty. What is so bad in putting on a pink dress and holding a blue bag? Pink and blue goes hand in hand. It goes fine. But the major thing is we should put on a pink shoe or a blue shoe. To combine it. Also, this guy is off. Oh, I should continue. Okay. Also, as a Muslim, if let's let's leave aside Muslim, as a female generally, we need to know that it is seriously not necessary for us to put on a slippers. Slippers does not really speak too well. Does not really speak absolutely perfect about us. Our slippers of nowadays, anywhere you are going, uh-uh. 
There was this time I have a sister. Anytime she's coming to our place, I know she's coming. Just because the way she works. That slippers tall. You see her pam, 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 pam. As she walks, the, sl the slippers sings alongside. So they know that ah, uh, everybody knows in the compound that ah, uh, Sister Musura is on her way coming to our house. So if you're a Muslim, as a, even as a lady, you should know, we should know, and we should understand that putting on the slippers to an occasion, to an event, so that office does not really speak so well. Let's get an heel. A heel will work perfect. Shoe, sandal, sneakers. Sneakers is also one of the modest fashion way that our sisters have been using. I'm so proud of our Muslima. Putting on your kemal, using your kemal, putting the sneakers on, it goes perfect. Your jalab on sneakers, it goes absolutely well. Your knitted gown and color, your lace, your fabrics, and you're putting on an ill, it's absolutely perfect. It will speak more of you. As a lady, as a Muslima, your outfit is not complete without holding a handbag. With a handbag and a wristwatch. My Muslim sisters, we are top notch. We are modesty. We are the talk of the town. We are perfect. Our outfit should always speak no. This is this. It doesn't import. It is not necessary you are putting on a luxury wristwatch. Keep something simple to complement the hand, to add beauty to the hand. To make it look nice. Aside that, it is not really necessary you start looking for your phone before you check the time. Time is conscious. You have to be conscious of salad time. With your wristwatch on your hand, on your wrist, it is easier for you to just look. Oh, it's time for zoo. Walk up to your mouth and observe your salad. So wristwatch does not only add to your beauty, does not only add to your dressing, it's also hard to your iman. It's hard to calculate the time for salad. With your handbag, you are perfect, you are good to go. So as a Muslim, it is important you have a wristwatch, it is important you have a handbag, it helps complement your outfit, it helps speak volume about you. We have some of our sisters that don't really like handbag, we like crossbag, we like backpack, put it on, make use of it. You have an item, it is easier for you to just speak and put. And in our bags, in our bags, our sisters in Islam, let endeavor to have a pen and a sheet of paper. A, a, just a small paper. The Prophet said, Tolabli ilimi fari dotun. Seki for knowledge is important. We don't know where we will walk up to and they will talk about knowledgeable things. Yes, the Prophet says, everything we do, every, every bit of our action must be knowledgeable. People should be able to learn from there. So definitely, anywhere we are going to, we should have the back of our mind that we are going to learn. And the best you can do is just to quickly pick up your paper and your pen and notes. Those are the reasons why you have to put, have your handbag. Keeping a toilet chair in your handbag or an handkerchief. You might just get to somewhere the seat is dirty. You pick it out from your bag and use it to clean. Don't forget, Islam talks more about cleanliness. So if Islam should talk about cleaning as we need to also abide by the rules and regulations, that's the guy we clean Where you will be sitting, you check. Most especially as a lady. With your tissue paper or your handkerchief in your bag, it is easier for you to quickly pick, clean up the place, and sit. So there are a lot of advantages, there are a lot of reasons why we have to bring our bag along to help complement our dress, to make us look nice, to make us look elegant, to make us look more attractive. Accessories is one of the major things that we need to dress well and to dress perfect. We all might tell our to make it easier for us. Don't forget, you can follow us at K Media. Send us your outfits, send us your bags, color, send us your wristwatch. Ask for ask questions on how you will combine. Definitely, we are here for you. For your next party, we are here for you. And to our Muslim sisters, that we say, okay, fine. I want to go to a party, I will use Kelly. You can't use Kelly. But we have the way, we have another way. You use your Kelly, and yet you can use your veil to cover up without connection. Your veil is not complete when you are exposing your neck. Using an hijab simply means you cover the whole of your hair, 
to your neck. So if you are going to your own bed, please be even light. Save Johnny. But your gele should add the color, the same color or a lighter color of that gele. Use it as a veil on it and cover up that neck. You don't need to expose it. Use your shade. It is not meant for everybody. It's for Abu inside the house. So Islam has the best guideline. It is Islam has the best tool for every one of us today's modesty. And please let's work towards it. May Almighty Allah continue to help us. May Almighty Allah continue to provide for us. May Almighty Allah continue to guide us on the way we dress and the way we are being. Because the way we dress speaks more volume to people. Salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another beautiful episode of Fruits and Foodies on King Media. My name is Bele Moriam. Today we'll be talking about this fruit that is not popularly known. This is the grapefruit. Now we have two types. We have the one, this is the red one. We have the one that is a little bit whiter than this. But we all know that grapefruit is known for its sour taste. But we can also use it to break fast because we can also use it with different things. Now we are going to be using it today with just a simple ingredient that we know, sugar. Now, what we are going to do is, today we are not using any machineries. We are just going to remove all the seeds and expunge the pulp from the... So we'll do it this way. We'll remove the pulp like this. We'll remove the pulp. So is that you are using this type of grapefruit or you are using the one that is a little bit bigger bam um, that is a little bit too whiter and somebody said that this is called big or oh, sorry i don't know about that but well but i know that it is called grape so and for its satis we know it for its satis but it's a very very good fruit for us to replace neutral lights that we have lost during fasting so you can see it is very watery it has plenty water So you have it. Now we have the two types here. So it depends on how sweet you want it to be. You add your sugar and you mix it very well. If you have a sweet tooth like me, you put plenty of sugar. But if it is for somebody that does not like too much sugar, you just put a little bit of sugar. Then you refrigerate. So that's your grapefruit. Now you eat it like this. If you want it to be just the juice, all you need to is pour all this into your sieve cloth. Then you squeeze out the juice there. You are going to get just the water. But I prefer it like this. This one is filling and much more sweet than when you eat it like this. Now this is you eating your grape juice. Thank you. Don't forget to see. Let's see on our next episode of Fruits and Foodies. May Allah accept this Ramadan as an act of Ibadah from us. My name is Belo Mariam.